Real life can be hard. Sometimes we don't want to live with technology, exams or responsibility. Sometimes we want to find comfort in the nostalgia of days gone and relive the feeling of imagination we once had. A world so sweet and free that we can do whatever we want. Strawberry Shortcake is an icon that dates all the way back to the 1970s as a character from a Valentine's card. Since then, her magical world has grown into cartoons, movies, dolls, books, games and websites over four distinct generations across a 40 year history. I find the world of Strawberry Shortcake so nostalgic. I think the aesthetic is just so cosy and pretty and seeing as we share a name, I thought it was only fitting that I take a deep dive into her world. I'll be revising every generation with a stronger focus on the 2000s strawberry because we're all about the 2000s here and it's definitely the most iconic era. But if you want to see me talk about a specific endeavour, you can use the chapters down below. I would love to permanently live in the nostalgic bliss of strawberry land, but the reality is that we live in the digital age. And that can be a good thing, it's how I'm sharing this video right now. It's just vital that you stay safe and secure while browsing, which is why I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas is incredibly easy to use. With just a few clicks, you can connect to one of their servers from all over the world, thus masking your IP address and letting you surf the web securely and comfortably. Right now, Atlas VPN are offering you an amazing deal at just $1.83 per month plus three months three with a 30 day money back guarantee when you use the link in my description or pinned comment. At such a ridiculously low price it's a no-brainer. There are so many benefits to using Alice's virtual private networks. Keep your Google searches private, stop ads and malware, save money while online shopping, protect unlimited devices and even discovering the best content without geo restrictions. When I wanted to cozy up and watch something comforting, finding that one specific title can be so tricky sometimes. But with Atlas VPN, by changing your location, you can bypass these restrictions, meaning there's so much more content available at your fingertips. For example, those of you in the US are missing out a lot with Disney Plus, but if you switch your location on Atlas VPN, you can get access to the star section that is full of bingeable series, blockbuster films, or nostalgic rom coms and teen flicks from the 2000s. Or if you prefer Netflix, the UK has a huge back catalogue of beautiful Studio Ghibli films with that whimsical nostalgic feeling. With Atlas VPN, I was able to revisit so many of my favourite nostalgic worlds. And you can too for just $1.83 per month. But make sure you're quick as this is a limited time offer. Once again, that's the link in the description and pinned comment. And thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring today's video. The story starts with a Polish immigrant called Jacob Sarpstein, who formed a greetings card company we know now as American Greetings, which started only by selling postcards out of his family's horse-drawn carriage, and quickly grew to the country's second largest greeting cards producer. In 1973, a certain girl with strawberry blonde hair and a large bonnet would debut on a Valentine's card, which is widely considered the first design of strawberry shortcake, known then only as the girl with a daisy. And she was created by Barbie Sargent, at the time a freelancer for the company. They pinned the strawberry motif as the force behind the character's success, and Sargent was then commissioned with creating four further strawberry cards to test the character's popularity. In the late 70s, the wonderful Muriel Farion, who was working at the company, was tasked with developing a strawberry-themed ragdoll character. Strawberry now became recognisable by her yarn-style hair, which was now a stronger red, her circular button nose, soft freckles and blush. She wore green and white striped socks with brown shoes, bloomers under her iconic dress and of course her big strawberry hat. I can't express how wonderfully sweet this design was and the lightning in a bottle that they captured, seeing as these illustrations are still relevant today. Different sources will claim different things about the true creator of Strawberry Shortcake, but from what I can gather while researching, Sargent created the concept but Farian created the iconography we know her for and the world of friends that she grew into. 
Farian had noted that Strawberry was a little lonely, so designed her a pink cat called Custard and her first friend, Blueberry Muffin, who had blue pigtails, a blue dress and hat with a blueberry motif. Then, because they needed a boy, Huckleberry Pie, who wore dungarees and a straw hat, and a baby, Apple Dumpling, who became identified by a yellow and red colour scheme with, of course, an apple design. American greetings had found success in other characters like Holly Hobby, who was introduced in 1967. They were able to expand her into merchandise and soft dolls, thus, as Strawberry Shortcake was developing, American Greetings opened up a new division, Those Characters from Cleveland, which would focus on licensing out its characters in merchandise. <laughs> Dolls from the Strawberry Shortcake in her friend's collection. Each sold separately, each with a separate smell. Strawberry! Going from greetings cards, Strawberry was licensed to the toy company Kenna in 1979, and then yearly animated specials would bring the distinct whimsy of all the colourfully sweet illustrations to life, where she quickly rose to being one of the most recognisable cartoon characters ever, with hundreds of integrated products to the point that in 1981, not long after her debut, she generated $500 million in retail sales. I am way too young to have grown up with this, but I love looking back at the origins of characters that I've loved and some of these designs are still my favourites. Thanks to that dreamy aesthetic of pastels, unique ragdoll-esque design, and of course the theming. Something that always got me when I was little was things based around food, specifically sweet foods because that meant bright colours. And as Strawberry Land grew to a large world of friends, each with their own silly food themed names and designs, she's kind of the blueprint for that idea. I just find such immense joy in looking back and finding all of the pretty pieces of artwork from this generation. The first ever line of dolls includes the original four characters. They were able to bring the soft and inviting feel of the illustrations to life, complete with their whimsical outfits, colourful hair, and ragdoll inspired faces of a cartoonish button nose, very tiny eyes, but lots of freckles and blush. Of course, these dolls would introduce their most iconic innovation, that being the character's unique scents. Your strawberry shortcake doll really smelled of strawberries. Your blueberry muffin really smelled of blueberries and so on. Smells can be such an identifiable thing and it's found that we kind of associate smells in our brain with specific places or memories so they can be such a huge cause of an overwhelming nostalgia. So no matter which generation you grew up in, these are something that can be identifiable for a lifetime. New staples were added to the franchise in 1980. Orange Blossom, Lemon Meringue, Raspberry Tort, and Baby Apricot. Each of these characters were given their own doll, and the next year they would introduce the pet accessories to every character. Angel Cake, Lime Chiffon, Butter Cookie, and Cherry Cutler were soon added to the lineup. Overall, I think looking back at the Gen 1 dolls, they're just so darling and lovely. They capture some of that sweet old school style with the lace details and their widely identifiable hats and bonnets, definitely the thing that ties such these strong character designs together. This was a huge factor for their popularity, because back in the 80s, other girly toys were under scrutiny for being too mature, but Strawberry managed to capture that innocence and youth. Sure, they can look a little bit creepy, especially nowadays searching the second hand market and being met with the world's largest foreheads and very unfortunate balding patterns for a six year old girl. but that just shows that they've been well loved throughout the years. The baby dolls, um, I don't know, I'm kind of disturbed by these. The more traditional ragdoll plush make a lot more sense, seeing as that's where the artwork takes inspiration from. In 1980, Kenna sponsored the first Strawberry Shortcake TV special. At just the length of a standard 22 minutes, the world of Strawberry Shortcake would establish the dreamlike place of Strawberry Land. Strawberry was voiced by Rossi Taylor, best known for her work as Minnie Mouse, and she's characterised as being soft and sensitive, but kind and inviting. And of course, she lives in a wondrous shortcake house and spends her days gardening and growing berries. In the episode, it's her sixth birthday and her friends are all coming along to throw a surprise party. This is then our introduction to the 
series villain, the peculiar Purple Pie Man. It also features a few musical numbers towards the beginning, including a classic 80s cartoon theme song. You can criticise these as just toy commercials. Honestly, I don't really have all that much to say about the writing itself, as the personalities aren't very expanded, but the aesthetic and designs from this world are so well crafted, and 80s animation has such a specific charm to it. Everything being sweet and food themed is just the cherry on top, or the strawberry on top. Even though I don't like the taste of strawberries, I know guys, I'm a faker, I'm sorry. They are just the cutest thing and I want to live in this house so badly. Okay, but we need to address the elephant in the room as it's something that persists over every generation of this franchise. Where the hell are these kids' parents? Do they have jobs? How are these six-year-olds sustaining themselves and managing to live alone? But once you take a step back and think, of course there are no adults in Strawberry Land because it's just a representation of imagination. This was clearly an intentional design choice. This world is not meant to be serious or realistic. It's meant to feel like an escape where you can focus on enjoying the little things and existing freely. And that is what I love about this franchise. Subsequently, each of the following years, a new special would release, introducing new characters as well as locations and furniture that would be a part of the toy line and franchise branding. For example, in Strawberry Shortcake in Big Apple City, she travels to this world's version of New York via purchasable butterfly companion, and she meets Orange Blossom, blooming the franchise's sweetest friendship. And then in Strawberry Shortcake, Pets on Parade, we meet the first iteration of Angel Cake, as well as the secondary villain, Sour Grapes. These fully grown people really need something better to do than beefing with a six-year-old girl. Get a job and stay away from her. The final three specials were then produced by a different studio, Nevlana Animation, as some of the original writers and crew left. In Strawberry Shortcake, Housewarming Surprise, a party is held inviting all of her friends from over the world, including Café Olé from Mexicoco, Almond Tea from China Cop, Crepe Suzette from Paris, and then twins Lem and Arda from Pickle Dilly Circus in London. Each of the characters would be released into a new line of dolls, followed by the Dancing Strawberry, the first jointed Strawberry Shortcake doll. So if this universe has other countries which are clearly parallels to countries on Earth, where is Strawberry Land? Like, is it a country? Is it a town? Also, do we know if Strawberry Land is named after Miss Shortcake? Because, like, she's only six years old. No shade to her, but this is a possible case of main character syndrome. After 1985, Kenner would stop producing dolls, and without dolls, there was no need for promotional cartoons. I find it odd how Strawberry went from selling millions of dolls in her first few years to rapidly losing popularity and being discontinued just a few years later. But alas, she would end up going on her longest hiatus ever. <laughs> Did you know that Strawberry Shortcake had a brief return in 1991? This technically should be considered Generation 2, but it was so brief and there was no animated media that I'm simply choosing not to. It was a newer company, THQ, that would take on the license and produce dolls. They're not widely different, but the addition of pupils and bigger eyes was a huge detriment to what made them sweet. These would improve nearly as popular, only introducing eight characters and lasting a single year. Strawberry's redesign is a lot more frilly. She has a big poofy pink dress and her hat has been replaced by a large bow. When I think of Strawberry, I don't see her as hyper feminine. She's always had kind of that more outdoorsy rural look. This design isn't bad though. I think it's lovely on its own. It just lacks that dessert theming that we came to love. Orange Blossom, Blueberry Muffin, Lemon Meringue, Raspberry Tort and Lime Chiffon would all feature in this relaunch, who haven't changed all too interestingly. The dolls featured two outfits and the extra ones were based on Generation 1, which is a nice touched and when packaged it just looks cute. She's very sweet. She's very cute. She's everybody's very favorite little redhead. Hi, I'm Strawberry Shortcake. Now available on video and DVD. After being absent for almost a decade, in 2003, Strawberry Shortcake would return with an updated design as a fully rebooted franchise, where she would become a 2000s staple. The character designs in this generation were more casual and grounded, something you'd genuinely see kids playing or running around the garden in, while also being aged up slightly to preteens around 10 years old. Despite this, the colourful locations and fantastic world still give it that whimsy and wonder. In my head, this is Strawberry Shortcake. 
they did such a fantastic job at maintaining what made Strawberry a lovable character while updating it for a 2000s audience and letting it flourish into its own multimedia world. The artwork and illustrations for this era are by far my favourite. You all know I have a soft spot for the 2000s and I think if you're on the Strawberry Sprite YouTube channel, you probably do too. The combinations of pink and green, everything being sweet and outdoorsy, it's just so me coded. Strawberry Shortcake became the original cottage girl girly. She's truly the blueprint. Her design featured short auburn hair, now with a simple red striped shirt and jeans with a jacket tied around it. Before, she didn't have much of a personality, but where the new series was more character focused, we understand her a lot more, and I'd say Strawberry is kind of a tomboy. I think for the aesthetic Gen 2 was going for, her simple everyday wear works best. Her original friends would consist of Orange Blossom, whose hair is styled in Afro puffs, wearing cargo pants and an orange sweater compared to dresses. I love her curly hair, she's always had such a sweet personality and friendship with Strawberry. Angel Cake balances comfortability with femininity, swapping her short lilac hair with blonde pigtails and bows. A glow up, in my opinion. She's characterised as a little sassy and short-tempered. I like her design, but uh, she can be a little bit irritating in the cartoon. A new addition to the lineup was Ginger Snap, a hyperactive and talkative character. I wish Ginger Snap was a character that didn't only appear in Gen 2 because she was such a core part of this series. Huckleberry was still there as the basic guy. Sure, every other character got more basic redesigns, but this is literally just a dude. At least the others still had some kind of fruit or sweet motifs, they just managed it in a more subtle way. These would initially be the core cast of characters and developed in an all new animated series created by IC Entertainment in collaboration with American Greetings, which were released straight to DVD and later on TV. Season 1 consisted of four specials, each 44 minutes long, released in pairs in March and October 2003, each crafted so that they can be interpreted as a standalone. I love the design and style of the DVDs themselves. How can you see this and not just want to run away to the strawberry world? The animation style itself isn't as wonderful as the static illustrations, but it translates well into a typical 2000s cartoon motion. Adds all of the fun locations, from fruit fields to chocolate rivers, were creatively executed. Also, the sound effects are so satisfying for what? There's a stereotype that food in animation always looks better than real life, but the childhood version of that was wanting to take a bite into everything in Strawberry Shortcake. Can we just appreciate Strawberry's house for a moment? The interior design skills, the little strawberry and heart designs everywhere. Also, we have to talk about it. I'm sorry for the fact that everyone is going to be playing this song on loop now. If you ask anyone to remember something about the 2000s series, this is probably what they'll picture. It's just such an earworm. It was also unapologetically long. Like, I feel like nowadays a lot of theme songs are cut down. Like, no, I want an entire essay on how that girl is so sweet, just like her name. Meet Strawberry Shortcake. We're introduced to our titular character and her friends through a journey to find supplies for a party she's throwing apple dumpling, full of some of the series' best set pieces. Spring for Strawberry Shortcake. The first day of spring comes, except Strawberryland is still covered in snow because spring is actually a fairy who doesn't want to do her job. I've already talked about the nonsensical logic of Strawberryland in Generation 1, which is the same here. The characters have such responsibility at such a young age. Strawberry Shortcake's Get Well Adventure. Generation 2 introduced these horse characters of the franchise, with the prominent one being Honey Pie. Such a weird character, I, I never got why she was here. Whatever do you mean, no parade for us? But of course there's going to be a parade! She falls sick in this episode, and her friends have to teach her the value of staying home. Berry Merry Christmas. Christmas and straight to DVD media go hand in hand, and apparently Santa Claus is canon to the Strawberry Shortcake universe. The nostalgia of Christmas specials are unmatched, when the iconic locations all get that wintry spruce. Each episode is also a musical. I think this is fun and sweet enough for kids. They vary from annoying to, oh, that's sweet. I can't think of any that stick out particularly either way. I feel like I should have more to say about this aspect of the series, but it's just kind of there. If there's a specific song you have memories of or you like a lot, tell me in the comments because maybe other people gravitated more to this side of the show. Tangent, but if I was in this world, I would really start to get fed up about the world revolving around strawberry shortcake. I made my statement on how I think this world represents imagination, so we'll just go with the fact that 
that in a child's mind, you don't fully comprehend that the world exists beyond your own life. Before we continue, if you are enjoying the video, please leave a like to show your support. It will help me out so much and I'm so grateful. If you want me to unlock more childhood memories, then subscribe so that you'll never miss another upload and make sure you turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much and back to the video. Very nice to meet you. Her very best friend. Angel cake. Ginger snap. Orange blossom. Fun never ends. She smells like strawberry. In line with the reboot, the license for Strawberry Shortcake dolls was sold to Bandai. They're still small in size, have no articulation, and the hair quality hasn't held up the best, but I'm so obsessed with these and I think they're just so sweet. The aesthetic of this era was just perfect. It's the overlap of 2000s nostalgia and like cottagecore, which is, that's literally like me. The little ribbons in Angel Cake's hair, the layered clothes, the tiny shoes and strawberry shaped brushes. Of course, their unique smells also carried over and the big hat which were embellished with embroidery, ribbons and charms. I just love them, they're so cute. After the initial line, subsequent releases would include the Berry Sweet Sisters, party themed sets and Wave 2 with the characters in dresses and skirts. Moment of appreciation for Orange Blossom's little crossbody bag. Of course, everybody had their pets, which they went through the effort of making varied moulds for different releases. I'm obsessed with the packaging for the Bandai dolls, the logo, the colour scheme, this specific font, the illustrations and displays on the back. Certain dolls would also have greeting cards cards or little sneak peek DVDs. So very adorable. Other than toys, Strawberry was licensed on all sorts of products like bags, diaries, shoes, pillows, nail polish, stationery, you name it, as well as storybooks with the most beautiful artwork, soft dolls, as well as plush of the animal companions. I've never come across these secondhand anywhere so comment if you had any. They look so scrunkly. Alongside tiny 2.5 inch dolls, there were mini charms and keychains. And of course, she got a McDonald's tie-in with these specially shaped keychains that opened up into scented lip balm. Very special friend in Seaberry Beach Party and Play Day Surprise, along with these other strawberry shortcake favorites. Collect them all, available on video and DVD. Season 2 of the cartoon, released in 2004-5, would shift into 22-minute episodes, connected by a specific theme in pairs for their DVD release, and glued together by Strawberry recalling them as memories. In Best Pets Yet, the first segment sees Custard jealous as Strawberry adopts Pupcake. Now, I think Custard is one of the most fun characters in in terms of her voice acting and delivery, but why is she the only one that gets to speak? The next segment introduces Peppermint Fizz as kind of the pseudo antagonist, for example when she cheats in the Strawberry Land Games event episode. At the end of the second Moonlight Mysteries episodes, we're introduced to Blueberry Muffin and her pet mouse. You're not a blueberry beast, are you? No! <laughs> I'm Blueberry Muffin. In this generation, her hair is a natural brunette to balance the variety of blue and light purple in her outfits. And instead of being a ditz like in the 80s series, she's more self-sufficient. In Dress Up Days, there's an entire segment about them just putting on a play with one of the most random links to its sister episode. Rainbow Sherbet is now added to the cast, never to return again after Generation 2. She has curly purple hair and a pastel rainbow hat and accessories. She's more of a tomboy and likes adventures. In the beach-themed episode, Episode, the protagonist and these two new friends would travel to Coco Calypso and Seaberry Delight, where they'd go on a swashbuckling adventure and in the second segment transform into mermaids, which you can now purchase at your local toy store. Bravo for us! One for all and all for one! <gasps> Subsequent toys would include newly introduced characters, as well as a beach line, the darling Berry Cute Houses playsets, and home furniture packs. The third season would release across 2006 and 7. A world of friends would call back to the 80s by reintroducing Strawberry's friends from across the globe. Crab Suzette, who went from curly blue hair to long pink hair with a chic style, and then Almond's Tea, who was renamed to Tea Blossom. In Cooking Up Fun, everyone starts up a cooking show. My name's Orange Blossom, and this is the Strawberry Land Cooking Show. Um. I wonder, is this broadcast worldwide or is it Strawberryland exclusive? And then in Berry Fairy Tales, we shrink down into the mystical world of the fairies. Then comes the Berry Blossom Festival and, uh, oh yeah, the Pie Man and Sour Great Britain. I haven't been talking about them much throughout because sure, cartoony villains are cool, but this isn't what we go to Strawberry Shortcake for. Raspberry Tort joins the lineup with a high ponytail in a much stronger bright purple than the softer pink from the 80s. Apricot 
Picard is now a kid and rocking the most Disney Channel outfit imaginable. She is truly the representation we need of the people who compulsively lied for no reason at all when we were younger. And discover for yourself whether dreams really do come true. Strawberry Shortcake, the Sweet Dreams movie, coming to theaters October 2006. In October 2006, Strawberry would get her first feature film as DIC released Strawberry Shortcake, the Sweet Dreams movie, initially in select theatres. And then in early 2008, home video, where every copy would include some organic strawberry seeds. The big change for this film is that it used 3D CG animation. And, uh, I can forgive cast McDonald's commercials or PS2 licensed games for having somewhat off-putting graphics on the basis of a weirdly nostalgic charm, but unfortunately for a feature film like this, I just don't like it. The character models aren't bad, it all just looks plasticky. Clearly they aren't working with a very big budget, so in favour of appearing like some huge innovation, they sacrificed all of the charm and whimsy the franchise had. The story was okay, I actually really like the idea of exploring dreams and the wondrous cloudy aesthetic that comes alongside it. It's a long episode of the series with 3D animation, not some grand theatrical event, but it was cute. Sadly, in 2008, Bandai lost the merchandising rights to Playmates, who would begin the Wild of Friends line as a kind of soft relaunch for the brand, aging up the characters, although the cartoon wouldn't catch up until season four. The dolls were now taller, had longer hair, their faces and packaging were different. Um, I, I don't know if I like them. The faces just don't work for me, and in terms of proportions and style, they're just not as cute. The issue is that they lost a lot of those sweeter, soft elements for that typical kind of teen girl cliches like clip on hair pieces. Well, move on to season four shortly, and I do like those redesigns, and I think the more mature direction was a strong evolution for the series, but the dolls just look a bit weird. The artwork, great. The dolls, eh. They had larger sized playdate pals and added some new characters like Crepe Suzette. Lemon Meringue is giving protagonist of a Disney Channel sitcom in the best way, but uh, playmates, do you care to explain what the hell happened to Orange Blossom's hair texture and why she and Ginger Snap, your core characters, barely got merchandise outside of some random winter line? let's take a trip to the past and explore the 2000s era games and websites. Strawberryshortcake.com would open up with a catchy but deeply compressed jingle as it opens you to a strawberry land plane. <laughs> where you could select songs and hover over characters or locations to visit the site's sections. News, Friendship Club, Strawberry Stuff, Storybook, eCards, and Berry Fun. Typically, I'll use the Wayback Machine to revisit these websites today, but not much of this one has been archived, which is a shame. Although I was able to revisit a few of the Flash games. After a few educational PC games, of course she would enter the world of licensed Nintendo games, including three yearly releases for the Game Boy Advance. Hold on, is that a strawberry sprite? These were your typical tie in side scrollers, but food theme levels are the best kind of levels in gaming, so my childhood self would have had a blast with a game full of them. And something about the way this Sweet Dreams tie in looks on the compressed, pixelated screen outsells the real deal, in my opinion. Also, does anyone remember Game Boy Advance video? When animated movies and cartoons were shrunk down into cartridges for viewing on the tragically low resolution of the GBA. Strawberry was one of the few brave enough to partake, so you could watch some of your favorite episodes on the school bus, car journeys, or under your pillow at night. I am a DS kid through and through though, and in 2006 and 2007, Strawberry Shortcake would make her way there. Strawberry Shortcake Strawberry Land Games was a collection of mini games and challenges, such as Berry Boarding, Berry Bounce, Balloon Race, and the Licorice Leap Race. You could access these by side scrolling the cookie pathway and talking to the different characters. Look at how silly and cute everyone looks as a DS model with looping idle animations. Nothing brings me back to being a kid more than the unapologetically 
colourful UI and designs of girly 2000s video games. People are so quick to dismiss these as cash grabs and sure it's not an amazing gameplay experience but it's just an adorable brightly coloured escape that I'm sure has become a strong memory for lots of people. The following game, Strawberry Shortcake The Four Seasons Cake, uses the 2006 redesigns and the sprites they use are so cute. Playmates, why could the dolls not have had this vibe? The little basket, the ribbon, her hair, ugh, she is just everything. The setup is that there's a baking contest and you have to travel across 2D platforming levels based on the four seasons collecting berries. Are the controls very refined or is the gameplay super fun? No. From what I've seen of people who played this game as a kid, it was kind of frustrating to their younger brains and I can see why. But from a visual and sound design point of view, props to the artists and developers who were likely given very short turnaround times for these kind of projects. Also, uh, Dance Dance Revolution Strawberry Shortcake Edition is a thing, apparently. As I've been building up to, season 4 of the cartoon would coincide with the series' soft reboot, taking on the teenage redesigns which would mirror in the episode's subject matter, as well as the characters' growing responsibilities and more mature personalities. Most of the redesigns saw the characters slightly taller and with longer hair. You know, kids can have long hair and teenagers can have short hair, right? <laughs> I think this was just an easy way for them to showcase that time was passing. Strawberry had longer hair which was seen as a less natural pinky red when animated and she wears a striped hoodie with pink Mary Janes although merchant renders would see her in a variety of outfits. Blueberry Muffin has blue hair again but only sometimes. I guess that was just more marketable for toys. Huckleberry looks honestly the same. Angel Cake became a fashion icon with a lace trimmed striped shirt, purple shawl and jeans with bows. Although in artwork she'd have long white socks and a denim skirt with pink and purple lace. Like, tell me you would not go on Pinterest or TikTok and see a girl wearing this being labelled as a fashion icon. Same with Orange Blossom, her hair is just so pretty in this era. Rockaberry Roll is all about music, where they form a band called the Strawberry Jams. Again, why does she have to be the band's lead title when the episode's entire moral is about working together as a group? Berry Big Journeys is all about travelling and going on a journey, because apparently she has a driver's licence now. New characters, Tangerina Torta, coded to be from South America, and Banana Candy, vaguely based on Banana 12 from the 80s, are introduced as they search for a mysterious flower. And then, in a race against the Pie Man, she takes a tour around the world, revisiting some of her old friends like Crepe Suzette and Tea Blossom. There's a whole DVD about dreams and the idea of growing up as the group thinks about what jobs they want to do when they're older. As if they're not already financially independent enough to somehow live alone, afford a house, furniture, food, a pet, a car? Also, Lemon Meringue was introduced as a fairly prominent character in this season, adapting to the new style and swapping a stronger yellow hair for a softer blonde. The final episodes, Berrywood, Here We Come, are all about the movies. Strawberry's childhood friend, Limelight, an attempt to bring Lime Chiffon back to the series, is actually a movie star, and so the group travel to Berrywood, and then they fight the Purple Pie Man to keep a movie theatre in business. Eventually, Generation 2 would start to fade away and eventually wrap up as the franchise prepared for yet another reboot. Let me know any memories you have from the cartoons or the toys. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the most popular era with my audience, but I do remember the next generation quite vividly as well. <laughs> DVD. Sharing together and playing together. Nice. Really nice. Makes the very best friends. <laughs> Strawberry Shortcake, Berry Friends Forever, new on DVD. In 2009, the companies Moonscope and Cookie Jar Entertainment would battle to acquire the characters' rights, but ultimately both lost. Hasbro won the merchandising rights and American Greetings would work to relaunch the franchise, starting in 2009-ish. The new designs aren't bad. Strawberry calls back to the 80s with her striped tights with a pink polka dot dress and white shirt. Her hair is a bright pink under her now strawberry shaped hat. The rest of the cast would follow a similar style with the main ones consisting of blueberry muffin, raspberry tort, lemon meringue, and plum pudding. Unfortunately, Orange Blossom was whitewashed during this generation, which is completely ridiculous when she's the only prominent black character and the core cast was already cutting down on diversity. Her skin tone is a lot lighter than past generations and she no longer has curly textured hair. I think in 2D drawings, this still feels like strawberry shortcake. 
it's still sweet, the characters are still cute, um, I don't mind it in a vacuum. The issue is that every character just looks the exact same. The same hair length and style, the same face shape, the same striped socks with some kind of floaty top. It just makes it lose a sense of character. And uh, in 3D, I just don't think it looks right. I'd say they managed to have a nice whimsical atmosphere better than the Sweet Dreams movie did in 3D. The world is very fairy-esque and foresty but the characters themselves just feel a little off. They just just don't look right. I'm ranting a bit. It's not that this series is bad. Um, I actually have a lot of memories for it because I was My Little Pony obsessed and in the UK this would always air right before My Little Pony on Tiny Pop. It's just that comparatively it's a lot easier to point out the things that you dislike. On their biggest movie adventure through Very Bitty City. We might be bitty, but when we work together, we can do big things. The Strawberry Shortcake Movie, Sky's the Limit. The series would start with a feature length film, the strawberry shortcake movie Sky's the Limit. In this canon, the friends live in Berry Bitty City and they're surrounded by these berrykins. Ah, uh, these little cursed sentient fruits which are a callback to one of the 80s episodes. But the city is in danger when a lightning storm brings down a giant rock that blocks their water supply. So the gang head off on a journey to find an ancient artifact they believe will save them. Season 1 would have 26 episodes, each 22 minutes, which aired in fall 2010. And season 2 through Four would have just 13 episodes each, which would release up until 2015. This time more traditionally on TV, with DVD releases being episode compilations that they'd sometimes smush together to try and mark it as a movie. Huckleberry Pie would return to the series with a new character, Cherry Jam. Overall, I just don't really feel compelled by this series in retrospect. Um, it's kind of cute that the characters have their own little businesses. I thought I was going to have a little more positive to say about it, but it's just fine and they don't really do enough interesting in terms of new characters to look at the episodes any further. Hasbro, who owned the doll license, would release a lot of smaller sized toys with Polly Pocket style clothing, which, you know, they're cute. It meant there was a lot of room for different accessories like scooters and style packs, as well as play sets like the boutique, the cafe, the salon and the pool. The six inch dolls had bigger cartoonish eyes. They're not hugely dissimilar to the Playmates era, but do seem very cheap and on the lower budget, you know, which is fine if that's the price point they're going for. There's still a lot of elements I like, you know, at its core, this is still strawberry shortcake and I love the whole theming. Although a shift put more emphasis on fruits than sweets this generation, I guess to not promote unhealthy eating. The packaging style would also shift to yellow. And for the most part, I like the box art design, but come on, it's strawberry shortcake. Cake. In 2014, the rights would shift once again to the Bridge Direct, where the dolls would start to feel even more generic and cheap. I don't like their faces. Uh they don't look like they've come from an official strawberry shortcake license. These look like bootlegs. Overall, the third generation seemed to be pretty successful and last a decent amount of time, but it was more of a mixed bag in terms of fan reaction and it would eventually die down around the mid 2010s. <laughs> In 2015, American Greetings would sell the rights to Strawberry Shortcake for $105 million to a company called Iconics Brand Group. Then in 2017, Iconics would partner with DHX and plans commenced to reboot the franchise once again for a modern audience, planning 39 episodes of a new 3D animated series. But ultimately not long after, DHX would buy the right to Strawberry Shortcake outright and subsequently concept art of the new series was published. And uh, what the hell did they do to my girl? The characters had such a typical cartoonish 2010 style and that can look good but this just doesn't in my opinion. From left to right new designs of lime chiffon, blueberry muffin, lemon meringue and orange blossom were also revealed. People were not happy and thanks to the internet and the power of nostalgia, outrage about these things can be so much more widespread. So viral memes, tweets and TikToks slamming these new designs caused DHX to quickly scrub any of its existence off of the internet, including a short animation snippet. Strawberry Shortcake lost media. Seeing as this specific 3D cartoon never got released, we can just assume it was cancelled internally somehow. And then the company, which would rename to Wild Brain, shifted gears and reworked things. I left my adorably tiny hometown of Berryville and came to Big 
After radio silence for a few years, the new series was announced and released in September 2021. Only now, it was a 2D web series on YouTube of episodes around only 8 minutes. The designs are clearly derivative of the 2018 concept art, just much more refined. Although of course, this wouldn't stop outrage. The varied body types and ethnicities were a necessary change, now they don't have to rely on Strawberry's international friends for diversity. Strawberry now has a long white dress, a beanie, denim jacket and crossbody bag, with trainers, clearly going for a more modern look. Seeing as the premise for the new series is that she moves to Big Apple City to further her baking career, joining her new friends in running a food truck. It's good to shake things up, but I'll always miss that escapist rural whimsy that Strawberry Shortcake once had. Orange Blossom has her hair in Afro puffs, this time with a headband, and I'm so glad to see the texture back in her hair, but personally I don't love it being orange. Lemon Meringue has a completely new personality, being a mechanic with short hair and overalls. Lime Chiffon makes a long-awaited return, taking the role of the bookworm and smart character, yet also into fashion. Blueberry Muffin has dark blue hair in a high bun, a blue dress, and she likes things like spirituality and meditation. Huckleberry has colourful hair, but still no fruit motif. My question is, where are the hats? I hate that they became less and less important as the franchise went on when those are the things that made it so iconic to begin with. Overall, the new outfits just aren't giving as much. Many, many characters have returned, although purely by name, because a lot of them have drastically different appearances and personalities. For example, we have Raspberry Tort and Crepe Suzette, as well as new original characters like Bread Pudding or Cheese Strudel. And even if I'm not a huge fan of the squash and stretch animation style as a fit for strawberry shortcake, it looks nice for what it's going for. It's a little chaotic for my liking, but I think the series is fun and sweet for the people it's targeting. But strawberry always popping in for these fourth wall breaking reality TV confessionals got tiring real quick, like the energy level is very high in the series. We even see that the characters have families? Clearly they were going for something a little less whimsical here. The series has gone on for two seasons with a third airing currently. A trailer was recently released for the new 3D animated specials based on Gen 4 that are coming to Netflix this year. And someone give the crew a medal for managing to smoothly make the shift to 3D this time around. I might just check these out when they drop. Um, also... I feel like I need to make this insert because um, it was just announced that there's going to be a character added called Pumpkin Spice. She's an influencer, so yeah, go Pumpkin Spice, I guess. There doesn't seem to be any new dolls or merchandising released for this new series, which is kind of ironic since I consider Strawberry Shortcake to be a doll tie-in. Instead, the brand has been feeding into nostalgia and pushing the vintage aesthetic of 80s Strawberry Shortcake, like through the many tie-ins with fast fashion companies or that one skinny dip phone case. You know the one. As of now, they seem to have a pretty strong partnership with Dolls Kill. Yeah, unfortunately, they're kind of problematic in their own way. Uh, as a lot of fast fashion companies are. And even though I was kind of joking about this earlier with Angel Cake, a lot of the kind of current fashion trends on social media are in line with the aesthetic of Strawberry Shortcake. And, you know, I like a lot of these pieces. I think they're really cute. I propose that we turn Strawberry Shortcake core into the next internet micro trend. You know, I, I really need to see people styling these strawberry Mary Janes. She's also pretty big on box lunch, you know, just with other generic merchandising. Although, you know, with the whole Y2K revival, um, it's a shame that pretty much all of the merchandise seems to be from the 80s series. In 2020, Basic Fun would release 40th anniversary special reproductions of the Generation 1 dolls and soft toys, which aside from small nuances, replicate them perfectly. And back in 2016, she even got some Funko Pops. The official strawberry very shortcake TikTok account is also nostalgia posting to popular audios and trends but you know it's nice to see that people still care about this world this is my meal i call this girl dinner girl, girl, dinner. girl dinner girl dinner girl dinner girl dinner, girl dinner. Girl dinner. Girl dinner. Over her decades of history, Strawberry Shortcake has won over the hearts of many, and I hope she continues to do so even if things change throughout the years. As a symbol of imagination and wonder, she'll always be one of my favourite characters, and just a source of comfort, and honestly, like, a style inspiration. <laughs> and I think we can all agree that she's so b b b berry extra d d dinary she's straw. B -b -b berry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake. 
Let me know all of your experiences with this world in the comments down below. Who was your favourite character? Which is your favourite generation of the series? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like. And if you want me to unlock more childhood memories or delve into nostalgic worlds, subscribe so that you never miss another upload. Also, a reminder to check out Atlas VPN in the links below to snag the great discount they're offering you. Um, can really help keep this, you know, train going. This was a topic I really wanted to discuss so um, I hope you all enjoyed. Keep spreading love and hopefully I'll see you in my corner of the world again soon.